this be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome everybody and thank you for all gathering together as we celebrate this Requiem Mass for the repose of the soul of Father Michael Casey. And as we trust Michael with great confidence and great trust to the Lord's love and care. I particularly wanted to welcome Michael's two nieces, Ida and her husband from Ireland and Helena and her husband from Canada, who have joined us here this morning uh, and are very grateful to be able to be with us as we are, that, uh, that you are here with us as well. We've gathered to say thank you to the Lord for the wonderful gift of Father Michael and his priesthood to this Archdiocese and, as I say, to entrust him with great care and great confidence to the Lord's compassion and love. So I invite you all to enter into the simplicity but also the beauty of this celebration of his life and especially of his uh, entry into the mystery of eternal life. We begin with the sprinkling of the coffin uh, with holy water. In the waters of baptism, <coughs> Father Michael died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him
They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand the truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received the command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
true. Whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, think about those things. As we reflect on the ways in which Father Michael has been a living example of what those look like when they're lived out in practice. And as we think too of what must lie at the heart of a person whose life is focused on such things, this morning I think we might allow ourselves to be challenged a little by Father Michael. What fills my life? What occupies my thoughts? To what am I committing myself? What, in other words, has captured my heart? <clears throat> Father Michael's heart was captured by his love for the Lord and for the Lord and for the people whom the Lord entrusted to his care. And this, I'm convinced, was the source of his joy and of his gentleness. And of course, it could be the same for us. All of this comes together, I think, very beautifully in this morning's Gospel reading, which builds on the beautiful psalm which we've also prayed and sung together this morning. In our Catholic tradition, the image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, who lays down his life for his sheep, is at the very heart of our understanding of the vocation to the priesthood. The Good Shepherd leads his flock to green pastures and quiet waters. The Good Shepherd restores and refreshes us when we become weary or discouraged. The Good Shepherd accompanies us through times of darkness and suffering. The Good Shepherd fills our lives with mercy and goodness and leaves us safely home. How does the Good Shepherd do this? By laying down his life for his sheep. By making of his life a generous gift of himself for the sake of those to whom the Lord sends him. We might say by breaking his body and spilling his blood and spilling his blood. That is by wearing himself out and giving himself completely so that other people might know what. This is the vocation of every priest. It's a vocation which calls for great generosity and great love. And it's a vocation to which Father Michael, through his long and fruitful priestly life, tried his very best to be faithful and to be true. Some of us here this morning have been called by God to this particular priestly vocation. For us, Father Michael stands as both a compelling and an attractive example and encouragement. For the majority here this morning, of course, God's invitation has been different. Your lives are lived in a different context, and your fidelity to God is lived out in a different way. But in the end, as our faith teaches us, we are all together members of God's priestly people. All of us, in our own particular situation and context, are called to follow the way of Jesus. And the way of Jesus is the way of the Good Shepherd. We would hope to see in our priests living signs of the presence of Jesus among us as our good shepherd, we have been blessed to see such an image of Jesus in the life and ministry of our mind. <coughs> One way of understanding the role of our priests is to see them and then support them and encourage them and cherish them as living reminders, living examples of what we are all called to be. <coughs> good shepherds to each other. We're all called to lead each other to green pastures and 
divine waters. We're all called to restore and refresh each other when we become weary and discouraged. We're all called to accompany each other through times of darkness and suffering and to fill each other's lives with mercy and with goodness. This morning, as we thank God for the precious gift of Father Michael's life and ministry, and as we entrust Father Michael with great hope and trust to God's compassion and merciful love, let us also resolve to show our gratitude to God for the gift which Michael has been to us by committing ourselves to living out our common vocation as disciples of Jesus. Let us allow ourselves to be both inspired and encouraged by this wonderful man, whom we now pray abides with the Lord in love, because God's grace and mercy are upon us. This is the promise of our faith expressed so clearly in this morning's readings. May this promise be fulfilled in the eternal life into which Father Michael has now Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voice of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to him. Let us pray for Pope Francis, for Archbishop Timothy and Bishop Don, for all bishops and for those who are entrusted with the pastoral care of the faithful of Christ, that they may lead the faithful in the footsteps of Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the leaders of our nation and of all nations that they may put aside all political and personal interests and strive for the good of all peoples, lest they hear the reprimand of Christ whenever you refuse to care for the least of my brothers and sisters, you refuse to care for me. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for Father Michael's family and friends here today and for those who cannot be here with us. May they continue their own life's journey with steadfast love and faithfulness and look forward to the great reunion as Christ has promised. <coughs> we pray for all our departed brothers and sisters. Today we pray for Father Michael's parents, John and Helena, and for all his brothers and sisters who have passed before him. May he be reunited with them in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for all those who cared for Father Michael throughout his life, and especially in his final months. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, God. You entrusted Father Michael to share the care of souls. Embrace him now in your love. Take him into your keeping, together with your parents and siblings of all who have died. Comfort us as we grieve, seek to do your will, and know your saving peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
the priest may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully ministered here. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right and just. It is truly right and just. <coughs> our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned. That those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Church, 
and recognising the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph has found, with all the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice to our reconciliation we pray, O Lord. And may the peace and salvation of all the world. <coughs> Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Timothy, the Bishop of this diocese, the order of bishops of all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember Michael Casey, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death by his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our worldly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. <coughs> for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him.
peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, spirit, and praise the Lord.
having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for Father Michael, your servant and priest, that as you make him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We seek it just for a few moments. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, unfortunately, Helena lost her voice in the last few days, so she can't join me up here today. Um, but the two of us have put a few words together on behalf of the family of Father Casey. Um, I have to say we are overwhelmed by the amount of people who have come both yesterday and today and for all the clergy who have come here as well. Uh, we'd like to thank um, Archbishop Timothy and all the concelebrants for a lovely service today and those who had the service yesterday as well. Um, Bernard Lawrence, the acolyte, and his two grandchildren um, who also were there yesterday and today. Thank you very much. Um, to Karen, Chris, and Caitlin, um, who were jet lagged actually, um, and for the beautiful music that they had for the Vigil Mass yesterday, and to um, Marilyn and Trish for the beautiful music today. To Sister Kerry, Geraldine, and Vanessa in the diocesan office, um, they were great in helping us with the arrangements, and along with Jenny Collins, um, the beautiful booklets that we have today and also yesterday. We'd like to thank the school and Anna and all the parishioners. Thank you. <laughs> and all the parishioners. Uh, we had a wonderful evening yesterday that you put on for us and it was lovely to be able to meet the people who knew our uncle, Father Casey. Um, we want to thank everybody who's been involved. And uh, particularly we'd like to thank Monsignor and the diocese office because they were the ones who helped coordinate it all. But more importantly, they delayed the service until members of the family, Helena, myself and our spouses, could be here to celebrate with you. So we really appreciate that and thank you very, very much. So, Father Casey. Okay. Okay. Father Casey, our Uncle Michal, as we knew him, was born in Fireys in County Kerry in 1925. He was uh, one of ten and he was the eldest son in the family. Uh, when he was five, uh, the family moved to the beautiful village of Adair in County Limerick. And he attended the Christian Brothers School, which is actually next door. He continued his schooling up in Black Rock College in County Dublin. After that, he followed in his father's footsteps and he went to University College Cork, where he studied dairy science. It was in his second year there, attending Lenten services, one evening following a sermon, he was inspired to apply for a priesthood. He was accepted into All Hallows College in 1946 at the age of 21. After eight years, during which time he was ill for a period of time, he completed his studies and he was ordained in 1954 in June. And Sister Kathleen, who's down here, she actually happened to be visiting relatives at the time in Adair, and she was at his ordination. And you'll see her pop up in a few places. So he was ordained, and then he was assigned to, the, to Perth. He and his family thought he was going to Perth in Scotland. <laughs> so this is very true. And so we were a little bit surprised and maybe somewhat shocked that actually it was to part in Australia on the other side of the world. So later that year, as his family stood in the docks, Uncle Michal waved goodbye to them and everybody he knew and loved to travel and sail off to the unknown. He arrived in Fremantle on the Arcades on the 2nd of December in 1954. I'm not going to talk too much about his life in the place that it was here. I think we've heard what he was doing there and there's something in the front of the booklet. But what I'm going to cover is the lens from his family and you know, the view from us about his life. 
he did value family. I think you all know that. And it was eight years actually before he saw them again. He returned home, unfortunately very ill. And it was thought, in fact, that he wouldn't recover sufficiently to come back to Australia. However, we know that he was a very resilient man and very determined. So after a year of recuperation, he did. He came back to Australia, which he now called home. He was fortunate to be able to return home uh, every few years. And whilst he was only able to attend one family funeral, which was his brother Tim, Helena's father, um, he was there for many celebrations. So he was there for ordinations, jubilees, uh, family reunions and weddings, including Helena and Brian's wedding in Montreal. Um, and when he couldn't make it home, sure, family would come and see him. And he had visits from Eamon, his brothers Eamon and Timmy, and regular visits from his sister Ida, who happens to be my mother. She continued to visit him right into the noughties. And when they couldn't come, his nieces and nephews came, and his grandnieces and nephews. And as his family came to visit, they got to know the wonderful friends that Uncle Mior had made. Many of whom welcomed us as if we were their extended family. So over almost 70 years, Uncle Michal served in four parishes and as chaplain in Castlebear. And it was during this time that he made those wonderful friends. And no more so than here in South Perth. Those friendships continued and new ones were made as he moved to Ryan's Court and then on to Margaret Tubery House. We were a little concerned about him when he moved to Ryan's Court. We thought he might be very lonely. And we knew that he did miss the parish and all the community. However, he wasn't idle. He didn't have any time to dwell on it because he was very busy with his diary. He had Monsignor um, for lunch on Mondays. He had the Thursday club with Deirdre and Jenny. He had Marie on Fridays. He had Pat Brown at the weekends. Helene and I on Sundays on Skype call. He had regular visits from the Lawrences. And of course, Dr. Woods checked in on, on a frequent basis and many more. It was these friends and others, including Father McKenna, Father Cara, and Matthew Noon Pro, who not only helped, but actually arranged his move into Margaret Hubert House. And sure, who was there to welcome only Sister Kathleen, a friend from the past, which was wonderful for him to have that friendship. I'm just going to take a drink of water, sorry. We would like to thank all of you and all the staff at Margaret Hubert House for looking after him so well. As a family overseas, we have been blessed to know that Uncle Michal had friends here who cared for him and loved him as much as we did. So when it came to his final journey, we at home knew that he would not be alone. We want to say how grateful we are to Pat Brown, Deirdre Anthony, Jenny Jones, what we refer to actually as the three musketeers, and their young D'Artagnan, which is Jenny Collins, and of course, Sister Kathleen. Not only did they arrange a rota to make sure that somebody was holding his hand right till his last breath, but they also made sure that we were connected with them the whole way through. We had phone calls and emails, and most precious was our video calls with Uncle Michal, and we'd many a laugh with them, with him and the people who were with him. So we are internally grateful to you for looking after him so well. So what was it about Father Casey? We've heard a little bit from uh, Archbishop Timothy today about the man that he was. So what was it that made him so special? The people cared so deeply about him. We know that he was a man of great faith. We used to at home call him no nonsense mix, so he was straight as a die. He was great with numbers and finances, which I think we've heard before. And there was many a project that was completed without any debt, including the church in Meriden. He was uh, frugal, and being frugal then meant that he was able to be generous to the poor. But he wasn't just generous to the poor, he was also generous of heart and time. He was a kind and compassionate man. And he enjoyed the simple things in life. As we've heard already, he also was great fun, what we would say, great crack in Ireland. But I think we've heard Archbishop Timothy said it, but you know, I always think Pat Brown says it. She said, Ita, Father Casey was the most wonderful man ever, and we loved him to bits. 
So today, whilst it is sad to say goodbye to him, really we're going to have a celebration of his life. And we would like you to join us in the Waterfall Restaurant in Pagoda Resort from 1.30 today, where we can have some food, more importantly, some chat, and really share the celebration of your friend and our uncle, Michael Casey. Gorev on Anam Ardesh Day, Gorev Mil Mahabrev Galer. Saints of God, come to his aid. Come to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him with God the Lord's May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's son. Receive his soul and present him with God the Lord's Give him eternal rest, O Lord. May your light shine on him forever. Receive his soul and present him with God the Lord's your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother, Father Michael, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Father Michael in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, Father Michael, and help us to remain to comfort one another with the assurances of our faith. Until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother, Father Michael, forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take Father Michael to his place of oppression. Mm -hmm. 